crash on runway three, area five. Two air crew, no weapons, 700 gallons of fuel. Alarm answered by the crews of crash rescue firefighting vehicles G-13, G-19, and G-23. Crash survivors can stand this heat for about three minutes. Less than two minutes from the time of crash, rescue completed, fire under control. An achievement possible only when equipment is used to the greatest advantage. Let's watch each truck demonstrate its individual capabilities. Here is the G13. It uses dry chemical. A light, fast truck, the G13 provides the quickest possible knockdown, but can operate for only 66 seconds at maximum discharge rates. The success of the G13 depends entirely upon teamwork. Handline men rush in. Too fast, too fast. Flashback. A sloppy attack. They have wasted both time and chemical. If this were a genuine crash, the lives of two air crew would be in great danger. This time, less haste. Coordinated sweeping, taking the fire with them. On this second attempt, fire is brought under complete control. Here in more detail is exactly what should happen. The driver has already considered wind, terrain and other factors and chosen the point of attack. Hand lines full out, no kinks. Signals transmitted visually or through physical contact. Unhurried, coordinated sweeping, the secret of a dry chemical attack. The crew chief moves ahead of his men. Hand line men concentrate on the rescue path. Rescue completed in 42 seconds. Now, and only now, is the time to go for complete extinguishment. Commands must be seen and obeyed promptly. Coordinated sweeping resumed. With dry chemical, no flame can be bypassed.
Here is the G23 foam truck. It can operate at full capacity for about two minutes. The G23 turret should establish a rescue path, insulate the aircraft, then isolate it. Something wrong. No rescue path. The fuselage is not being insulated properly. Mixture wrong. Foam weak. Gone. Right from the start, this attack was a failure. The turret was completely ineffective, but it was not the fault of the turret operator. It is the driver's responsibility to adjust the foam mixture. He did it incorrectly and did not react to signals. In this exercise, the inefficiency of one man has destroyed the effectiveness of the G-23. Use the G-23 correctly, and this is what can happen. Rescue completed. Fire under control. Time, 70 seconds. Here again is what happened. A sweeping motion to establish the rescue path. Insulation and isolation. The occupants are given vital relief from heat. The turret stands by. Rescue crew and one handline man enter. Their teammates retain control of the rescue side. Don't break the foam blanket. Sweep carefully. Deflect. Move carefully. Turret guards the rescue path. Survivors must not pass through flame. And now, as much as possible will be salvaged. But as always, lives were the first concern. The G-19 is also a foam truck. Its attack pattern is almost the reverse of the G-23. The turret will open the attack, but it will first insulate, then isolate. Only then will it establish a rescue path. Forty-two seconds. Successful rescue and control. (laughs) 
Let's repeat a G-19 attack. The G-19 turret has a range of almost 100 feet, permitting rapid location and insulation of the aircraft. This foam is tenacious. Its blanket brings quick relief to those trapped inside. The driver controls all foam lines. His is a key position. Turret goes on standby. While the rescue crew, covered by one handline man, enters the aircraft, the second handline man is free to move over and continue isolating. The foam blanket is strong, no need to sweep gently. Foam can be lobbed on where needed. Brace yourself against nozzle blasts. Used correctly, the G-19 foam truck is the firefighter's most potent weapon. Here is a two-truck demonstration. The G-13 arrives first. The driver has elected to attack from the side. This is the normal G-13 attack. Main objective, rescue path. Here comes the G-23. The G-23 turret widens the rescue path and carries on to insulate and isolate. G-13 hand lines shut off and stand by. Before all forces combine to go for complete control, a final check is made for survivors. Because of the low expansion foam, dry chemical must be applied with care. Nozzle blast can break the foam blanket and cause flashback. This fire is being attacked by the G-23. In a moment, it will be joined by the G-19. The G-23 selects the side. The G-19, the nose. A position that complements the G-23. Forty seconds. The high expansion G-19 foam makes an adhesive blanket and can be lobbed on. 
The low expansion G23 foam can reach more difficult places, but must be applied with great care. This time, 1,000 gallons of blazing fuel test the capabilities of the G-19 and G-23 as they make a simultaneous attack. Insulate. Isolate. Rescue path. Enter. Hold the path. Too hot. Flashback. Rescue and control in ninety five seconds. We have demonstrated the capabilities of the G-13, G-23, and G-19 when manned by highly efficient crews. We have concentrated entirely on firefighting. There is a great deal more. There is the aircraft itself. It may be any one of hundreds of types. Is it fighter, passenger, cargo, bomber, patrol? How many crew? Where are the main entrances? Where are the emergency exits, the cutting areas? Members of a crash rescue firefighting team must know the answers, must know the planes that use their field. How does the canopy open? Where is the canopy release? What weapons are aboard? How do you release the pilot's harness? Did you know that a burning wheel cooled too quickly can become a deadly missile? that some wing edges can cut like knives, that if you don't know your business, an ejection seat can kill both you and the man whose life you are trying to save. And even suppose you know your firefighting and rescue techniques, how well do you know the surrounding countryside? There's no regulation that says all crashes must occur on base. Do you know what lies beyond the perimeter? What's over that hill? Is that firm ground or is it swamp? Just how mobile is your equipment? Lives may depend on your knowledge, for when the smoke begins to rise, someone has three minutes to live and lives depend on you. Three minutes to live, and already 
two have gone. This is not a contest between vehicles, but a race with death. If this was your team, operating from your base, would you be in time?